Ohana means family. Family means no one gets left behind or forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank for Disney Royalty interlude, Lilo and Stitch, Lilo and Nani. So it was a bit of a stretch, honestly, to put Lilo and Stitch up here. And I'd be lying if I said it didn't, if I said it didn't have anything to do with this. another film that really thinks it's really focused on the elements of sisterhood and whatnot. Lilo and Stitch is sort of an oddity film in a lot of ways, and it sort of fits the post-Renaissance era because, as I said before, it's trying to move away from the sort of very Disney princess aspect to it. It's, it's moving away from the concept of, you know, actual fairy tales. It's sort of moving in, moving away from the very simple, the very, you know, fantastic aspects and going down for more realistic thing. Even Atlantis, The Lost Empire, was a bit more grounded in reality in its focus, which was really Milo continuing his grandfather's work. Here, it's about two sisters dealing with the loss of their parents, and it wasn't that radical an idea, really. Um, if you've watched a lot of sitcoms, especially the ones from the 80s and 90s, you will, of course, remember shows like Mr. Belvedere, Benson, Alf, The Nanny, you know, stories about families that are sort of broken in one way or another and are sort of, you know, not fixed, but, you know, patched up and mended by the introduction of this really out there character who provides a sort of new light, new direction, new focus, even new purpose. And if you really want something, something a bit more fun, I would go, what about Bob? That movie's hilarious. Lilo and Stitch was amazingly popular when it came out, and more so afterwards with its spin-off series it was the first disney series that i can think of really at the time outside of aladdin and hercules that crossed over with other shows you know all of a sudden lilo was working with american dragon jake long the cast of recess the proud family kim possible everybody but fillmore and doug and pepper ann but we all knew why doug wasn't there and we all knew why pepper ann wasn't there but fillmore deserved to be there at its core, I think the most interesting character in Lilo and Stitch from a popularity standpoint is Stitch. And that's understandable. Stitch is a very fun character. But I think we would be remiss to sort of ignore the really strong aspect that was the premise, really, for Lilo and Stitch. At the end of, at the, end of the day, Stitch is a creature searching for purpose, something for, for something beyond the destruction he was created for. And he finds that with the family. But Lilo and Nani are a family that is really trying to get back on its feet, like the shows we listed before, you know, Alf and the Nanny. And it's a bit sad that idea, that, that dynamic between them, while it isn't totally erased, gets pushed further and further in the background as the series goes on. And that's especially sad because the character that suffers the most from that is Nani. So we're just going to sort of talk about both these characters and what I felt was really great about them. So when it came to Nani, I think... What makes Nani work is, again, the realistic aspect to her, not just in terms of her design, but also exactly what she's doing. She's a she's a teenage girl who has to grow up. You know, she's forced to grow up because her parents have died in a car accident, and she has to take care of them, take care of her sister as well as herself. So she's put a lot of her life on hold for that. And I want to give the serious points for never really making it seem that Nani ever regrets that decision. She It's not just so much that she knows Lilo needs someone. She needs Lilo. And she's put a lot of her life on hold for that. You know, we see a lot of trophies in her in her room, which, you know, show you know a lot of athletic accomplishments. And that could have led her to, you know, maybe not hitting the pro circuit, but could have led to college opportunities. And she puts that all that on hold. You know, she has a boyfriend, David, had to double check that, but she doesn't have time for him, or at least as much time as she'd like. And David thankfully understands that and does his best to help her f help her find a job whenever she needs one, and he's always there. But it's sort of clear that Nani is sort of trying to be the best she can be. I think at times she feels the pressure, but she never really lets it get to her. Like she'll sometimes lash out, but she's often just very quick to recover. She's just sort of juggling a lot of different things at once, and you know with. The social worker and Cobra Bubbles coming in and, you know, her own sort of shortcomings, like her own temper, can sort of lead to her, you know, with a lot of problems. But Nani never brings those problems to Lilo. It's usually something Lilo does that makes her bring anything to Lilo. Like, the only time she bites off Lilo's head is when Lilo does something that's actually a problem. And if it's something else, like something personal, 
like, you know, Nani losing her job. Because of something Lilo's done, Nani doesn't let Lilo know. She says, nah, the manager was a vampire. He tried to recruit me, so I got out of there. Because it's not something Lilo needs to worry about. Nani wants Lilo to be a kid. She doesn't want Lilo to worry about, you know, where the where the next paycheck's coming from. Is she going to be taken away? In a lot of ways, she reminds me of the character James J. Braddock from Cinderella Man. You know, she's promising that, you know, I'm not going to let anyone take you away. You're not going to go anywhere. And I'll take care of it. That's a lot of what Nani wants to be. Nani wants to, well, I don't think it's a matter that she wants to. She needs to be the grown-up to take care of Lilo, to keep Lilo. And that's an amazing quality. And I think we sort of underestimate how hard that can be. Because she's not just a sister anymore. She's she's no longer um, a child in in the conventional sense. You know, she no longer has parents to, you know, to look out for her. She's on her own. And she doesn't want Lilo to feel that way. When it comes to the matter of Stitch and Nani, I always felt like that should have been more focused. I would have loved to see a Nani and Stitch episode. Or like a Nani and Stitch movie. Like Nani and Stitch, you know make a road trip Nani and Stitch go to White Castle I'd love to see that because I think it in a lot of ways she needs Stitch too not just because Stitch will serve as like an actual child for her or even a younger younger sibling it would just so it would just be fun to see that sort of dynamic the two of them have where in a lot of ways they both sort of agree like we'll both look after Lilo together and I think that would have been sweet she does eventually open up to him but I never quite feel that's in any sort of real way but Nani does sort of, I think, she makes a real habit and sort of an art of going back and forth between older sister and surrogate parent. Coming up to Lilo, Lilo is, honestly, she's not that odd a character, at least from my, from my perspective. I've met plenty of people like Lilo, plenty of people who are just sort of out there in their own special way. A lot of people think she might be autistic. And I don't think that's really something that we could make an actual assumption of. I would really only make that sort of assumption for characters like that if they have different ways of being interpreted over the course of the years. You know, the best example would be characters like Sherlock Holmes, Batman, Superman, Reed Richards. But Lilo, I think we sort I think it's sort of easy to forget that she also is dealing with the loss of her parents. And it's hard to tell if if anything that's going on with her is something she's always done or just her way of coping. Lilo, like a lot of her predecessors, you know, Belle, Ariel, Mulan, are viewed as oddballs, odd ones out. They don't quite fit in. The difference is, though, those characters were never really chastised for. Yeah, people talk about Belle behind her back. And, well, they sing about her behind her back. And Ariel's... We've said enough about Ariel in other videos. Lilo is chastised for, you know, she, her behavior becomes a problem because in a lot of ways she's lashing out. She's trying to make sense of what I think in a lot of ways she wants people to deal with her. She wants people to parent her in a lot of ways. But at the same time, she also feels generally alone. And, you know, she has, you know, she she takes pictures of obese people as like a hobby. She has her own, own personal doll, but she also keeps a photograph of her parents underneath her pillow. That's a lot. And she also seems, in a lot of ways, mature for age. I think in a lot of ways, Lilo has sort of agreed to grow up in some ways and not grow up in other ways to sort of make it easy for Nani. You know, there are things she knows how to do by herself that, you know, a lot of other kids her age wouldn't and at the same time she sort of ups the ante I think in a lot of ways she likes the banter she likes to she wants her sister and she wants her mother and she tries I think in a lot of ways sort of get Nani to be both with when it comes to introduction of Stitch into her life Lilo is given something else to focus on I think that's really what she needs someone who needs her and I think a lot of kids like to do that. They like to they like to teach what they know. They like to guide people. And for Lilo's case, she has a younger brother or even a surrogate child in a lot of ways. And that sort of helps her in a lot of ways, I think, understand Nani a bit. But at the same time, Lilo's also just this little kid. You know, she likes to have fun. She likes to goof around. And instead, she has a real friend that enables her to slowly move past the death of her parents. And 
the real tying knot again between Lilo and Nani, which I think we've mentioned at least three times in one way or another, that there are two people who are trying to get over the loss of someone and adjust to this new situation in the only ways they know how. And they're going to butt heads because they're both equally stubborn. And in a lot of ways, I'd put money that Nani was a lot like Lilo. And they both want someone to come down and say, it's going to be all right. And instead, they get Stitch, who doesn't say everything's going to be all right. Stitch says, I need you guys to tell me everything's going to be all right. And that's how their dynamic works. Nani uses Lilo a lot of ways to help motivate her to do better and Lilo uses Stitch to motivate her to do a lot better and Stitch uses Nani and Lilo to be happy I think I think and that amount of heart is sort of what I think is what I remember the most about Lilo and Stitch that and the Elvis Presley references dear lord I love those Elvis Presley references but I don't think Disney can boast a stronger sibling duo. I don't think they ever will. Than they will with Lilo and Nani. Uh, I think, if anything, I think the other best sibling duo would be... Well, not Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Like, I love them to death, but nah. Uh, Dipper and Mabel. And the loss is something that Lilo and Nani will share for the rest of their lives. And they're going to come out stronger because of it. And that's sort of why I'm a bit down that that dynamic is downplayed in later works. But I think at this point we're rambling and no one really wants to hear me ramble about something this depressing. So with that in mind, we'll bring this video to a close here. If you're new to the Bucket Think Tank, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Love to hear your thoughts on this movie. Feel free to check out some of my other videos in the Disney Royalty series or some of the other stuff I've been doing. And I will catch you all later. This is the Bucket Think Tank signing off. May your fandom serve you well.